name is Belinda McGinnis. I am a math teacher and digital learning specialist at Lenore County Early College High School. What I'm going to show you today is how I structure notes in Google Slides so that students can take notes digitally in a way that doesn't require them to type math or try to draw math on an iPad screen. So here's the Lenore County Public Schools Math 1 Canvas course that we have been working on for this year um, with the understanding that for the first semester um, students will be working remotely. So what I want to look at is a set of notes. So we're going to take the eMath instruction variable and expression notes. The students will, when they open this on the iPad, just the way that it is, they will be able to try to write on top of uh, the document or um, type on top of the document. But we all know math is hard to type. Um, and sometimes, unless you have a really good stylus, it's hard to um, write on an iPad screen. So the way that I um, get around that is by taking screenshots and putting them in a Google Slides. So the way that you take a screenshot on a MacBook is Command Shift 5. So what that does is that gives me the option to size a box around exactly what I want to take the screenshot of. So that will be my first slide. So now I'm going to come to the next section and I'm seeing that in exercise two, so this will be my next slide. And then I'm going to continue to take screenshots in a way that splits this worksheet up into uh, something that seems reasonable. So now that I have all of the screenshots, I'm going to go to a Google slide. I'm going to title this. I like to get rid of the text, uh, the title and the subtitle information here and use um, either text or word art. Um, word art gives you a little more flexibility in what it looks like. So I'm going to call this, this is going to be my title page, those variables and expressions. And then just kind of make it look good, look like you want it to look. You can fill in the color. So you can do all kinds of things here to make this look nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first screenshot. Which was this one. And I'm going to drop this into my first slide. If I double click on this, I can also resize this since I've used the title here. I don't need the title there. So I can resize that a little bit to fit the way that I want it to fit. And then on a new slide, and I'm going to create a new blank slide. Now I'm going to come in and bring my next screenshot. And we're just going to continue to do this until we have all of the screenshots on to the slides. Now that I have what I want, one thing that we're really looking at in remote learning is making sure that students have access to all of the resources that we can possibly provide. So while this may be a set of notes that we can go over during a Zoom session, a live Zoom session, it may be a situation where a student can't get to the Zoom session or even where a student might need a little more resources to get through um, these notes. 
So what I like to do at the end, especially with the eMath instruction, because there are so many videos already created, is I like to put the video within the notes. So I go to eMath instruction and find the set of notes that um, we just completed, where we just created, and um, get the video for that set of notes. And so I, I copy the link. And when I come back, again, I like to put it on the last slide. And I'm going to insert a video. And that video is coming from YouTube. So I paste that link into the box. And now the student not only has access to the notes in Google Slides, but the student also has access to the video to those notes here in Google Slides. A wonderful opportunity to do some front loading activities with your students. The next step would be to make this accessible to the students in Canvas. So the way that I do that is I copy the link to this set of notes and then in Canvas I'm going to add that link to wherever I need to put it. If I put it in a page or um, in a, within a module, wherever I need to put that link is where I'm going to put that link. For our purposes here, I am going to link it directly into the module. So I'm going to add an external URL that URL, so I'm going to paste. And this is the very important part that you need to make sure you do before you paste it. Right now, this gives them access to that slide. And if they have editing rights to that slide, then all of your students can edit. But what I'm going to do is um, edit this link so that it forces the students to make a copy. So I'm going to take here where it says edit at the very end, delete that out and put copy. So now anytime a student clicks on this link, it's gonna force them to make a copy of the slides. So I'm gonna give this um, a name. So this is gonna be the EMI uh, variables and expressions. I'm just gonna call it Google Slides Notes. And then you can choose to have it load in a new tab um, or indent and so forth. So I'm going to add. And we're going to see that this is going to go um, link in here at the very, very bottom. So now when a student clicks on this, it's going to force them to make a copy of those notes. Here we are looking at this from the student end on an iPad. So as you can see, the, the link that we just put in shows up at the very bottom of this first module. We can move that later to where it belongs. Um, but this is the link that will force the student to make a copy. Um, remember that is when you delete off the end um, up through edit and change that to copy. So now when the students click on that, and choose to open, it forces them to make a copy. This keeps the students from um, being able to um, change anything about your original Google Slides document. So now that the student has a copy of this slides, the student can edit this in any way that they choose. They can choose to add text if they would rather type. Um, but one of the benefits of doing uh, this with slides is the ability to add pictures. So if I'm looking at this first example here, three times two plus seven, um, if you needed the student to show their work for something like that, they can now take and do their work on a piece of paper and add a picture. So in the top right corner where we have the plus symbol, the student would click on that plus symbol and choose to add an image and they can choose to add an image straight from their camera. And so with their camera, they can zoom in on the problem or, or take a picture of where they solved the problem on paper. And then 
put that right inside of the document quickly and easily. So this is a, a very easy, simple approach on the student end for being able to keep up with the notes. Um, and now the student has these notes in their Google Slides. So in this assignment, I'm going to give a, some instructions. And I'm going to link to a URL. So again, this is the one that I've created for the students in Google Slides. I'm going to highlight my link and copy. And here I'm going to paste that link. I'm going to take everything out up through edit and change edit to copy. So now the students can click here to access those notes. And you would decide several of the different things down here. Um, because it is an assignment that I want submitted, I'm gonna have the students submit this assignment online. And then we can, come, we can pick and choose how we want the student to submit that assignment. In this case, it's gonna be a file upload. And there are several other things that you can pick through here. You do have to pick a due date. So let's see what that looks like on the student end. So here the student may have finished the notes and are ready to submit. So what the student would do to submit, is they're going to click on the menu in the top right corner. So that is there are three dots in the top right corner. So when we click on that menu, the students are going to share and export. And they're going to send a copy. I like for it to be sent as a PDF. It is much more easier to read as a PDF um, in Canvas. So they're going to share or send a copy as a PDF. And they're going to copy it to student. So at this point, the student can add any comments that they may want to add to the assignment. It could be questions or, or, or things such as that. And then they would choose what course this, is, this will go to. And then they will choose what assignment it goes to. And then once they have chosen and they will click submit, then it will go to um, the teacher end to be able to see it. I hope that this was helpful to you as you're planning for um, remote instruction this semester. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Belinda McGinnis and I am a teacher and digital learning specialist at Lenore County Early College High School. Thank you.